Hour two overdrive continues. Brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. Brian Hayes, the O'Dog, Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan, Bill Guerin coming up later this hour. GM of the uh, Minnesota Wild. Minnesota in town tomorrow night. A rare Saturday night game for the Wild here in Toronto. I don't yeah. know how often that's happened in their history. I don't know if you were playing on a Saturday night noodles when you're on the expansion oh. wild. <laughs> I don't imagine. think we got a lot of marquee. You want to talk about flexed games. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were been. like the 2-1 kings of hockey, oh. man. I'll tell you what, yeah. for an expansion team, you had to work to beat them because you go into Atlanta, yeah. it was just like – you could go out and have 30 beers the night before the whole team, and you're beating Atlanta 5-1. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mini, you had to work. It was like, yeah. or, they'll, or they'll beat you 5-1. But if you wanted to work, you could beat them 2-1. That was all that's available. Yeah. All. They, they, <laughs> I had a, it was a weird year because I actually thought that I played pretty well. I only had five wins that year. But I was like, I had some really tough situations. I remember sitting down with Jacques uh, Lemaire. And he said, you're going to get some tough starts. And if you look at it, I think it's still like a stat. So goals support. Like, mm-hmm. I played in 38 games that year. They gave, I got 53 goals of you're goal support that me. year. No. That's impossible. 53, yeah. So I was – it's it's actually wow. one, I think, in modern time. I, I see it once in a while in a stat, like on, on Fonted and Games or whatever. It's like lowest goal support. Like I'm right there, like, you know, I don't know with who, but it, it's like a weird one. Yeah, I, I played in 38 games that year, and I think the team scored 53 goals total. That's so got to like, be one of the craziest stats I've ever heard. Like you, you have to yeah. take that personally after a while. Like, Well, I – I mean, we, I had four shutouts that year. Two were zero zero ties. That's gross. You were like, Kevin Gosman. Like you, you were the <laughs> the original Gosman. You'd go out there yeah. and just get no run support. But you know what? We it was we knew what we were in for that year. We were like O said. We played hard and we made teams earn it, but mm-hmm. they were better than us. Just bottom line. Like, we were a band of misfits. We were cast-offs from other teams. There were no side deals. Hey, here, you know, we'll give you Shea Theodore to not pick this guy. Mm-hmm. You know, like, there there was nothing like that. It was like, yeah, Jamie McLennan, you can have him. <laughs> right. We'll sign him to a two-year extension. He's right. yours. You know, so... I, I, you it, know what? You mentioned that, that expansion, like that Vegas expansion. I'd watch a 30 for 30 on how that went down. Yes. And, yeah. and how it played out. Like, don't take that guy. Like That Theodore one is insane how Anaheim missed on that one. But. Right. Well, well, and you need to have it mic'd up and taped on both sides of the aisle because as much as Vegas was probably like, we really want this guy. We think we can get him. We think he's good. The other side was like, man, they're taking this guy instead of that guy. How great is this? Like, how cocky some of the teams would be that were given up on Theodore. They were given right. up on William Carlson, given up on Marcia So and Riley. Yes. Like, it didn't take them long to hear this, you know. Oh, the, yeah. only, the only thing you had going for you, Alex Tuck, right, was he, I think it was Tuck and, and Eric Howla was, came out of Minnesota. The only thing you had going for you was you weren't the only one that screwed up, right? right. There, there wasn't like one standalone where it's like, man, I can't believe you gave up that guy. Like, yeah. Theodore's still there. Carlson's yeah. still there. Marshall's well, so still there. I, I believe that the Theodore deal was we'll give you Shea Theodore for you to take Clayton Stoner. And, and, and they took Clayton Stoner and I think buried him or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I don't know who it was not to touch. I can't remember the player. It was ha- I, maybe Hampus Lindholm. Maybe. Yeah, it was either like, Lindholm or like there was Fowler. Fowler or there Fowler, was uh, yeah. Manson. Like they had other defensemen there in, in Anaheim. Yeah. Um, but it, it, I, I remember hearing a story. Now. I'm not sure if this is true or not, but I, I remember hearing a story that the only GM that would not negotiate with Vegas was Ken Holland. He was like, just take a player from my yep. team and I'll work it out. Exactly. Like, Brilliant. You know, everyone else worked out deals inside. Like, look at that Florida. Marcia So and Riley, and wasn't Riley it? Riley Smith. Yep. They yeah. They got the both of them. That's Riley Smith, yeah. What's crazy. Who, what was that? Take those two and not who? I want to say Nick Bugstad. I, I feel like it was Bugstad, and partially it was. Like, <laughs> I don't think so, I think man. It might have been. I think uh, when Bugstad was coming up, he was. You like got that play. damn he wrong, was, pal. You I, got I it damn know. wrong. Look it up. I'm telling. Bugstad was a guy they really liked when he first yeah. came on the scene. Like really, yeah. really liked, and um, obviously it didn't 
pan out that way. I don't yeah, even know if he's in the league this year. He's he was playing in Edmonton. Arizona. He, he played. He played in Edmonton. Yeah. He played. He signed back. He's in Arizona. He signed there, but he he actually took a two year deal in Arizona. Edmonton wanted to sign him to a one year deal because I think he played pretty well there as their fourth line center. Mm-hmm. But he got a little bit more. My understanding is he got a little bit more uh, security and signed, I think, a two year deal in Arizona. So not the you best. Know, Still Not playing, though. Still, still going. Still playing. Still playing. And, <laughs> and Vegas is still rocking. And, you know, they, they went into San Jose. They won last night. They're 2-0. and And yet I don't recall anyone saying that Vegas could go back-to-back. I, I don't – like, it's almost as if we haven't learned anything about the way Vegas operates. Craig Button the, said it on the preview show. I, it's like, how come none of these guys around here, we all kind of voted and had picks – how did no one take them as back to back? They look damn good. I mean, I, they played the Kraken, who didn't have a good opening night, and then they dummied San Jose. But they're why still wouldn't loaded, they? man. They're loaded. Well, I, I, you know, I saw one guy, Mike Kelly, our buddy Mike Kelly. Mike okay. Kelly took Vegas, I believe, to win the cup. And I, I was, he laid out a bunch of numbers and stuff, and I, I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. Like you're right because I think. We're always looking for the next. Like, okay, who's, you know, they got theirs now, who's next type of thing. And there were a few people that went back to Colorado and said Colorado had a down year last mm-hmm. year, some injuries, Landis Gog. I just don't know. Like, I'm, I'm interested to see Colorado, like Ryan Johansson, how he fits in there. Mm-hmm. You know, like, because he, he's, he's a guy that I think is immensely talented. But is he a guy that... It is a Colorado guy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I just like. Can you fit in there? Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Like, I don't Same know. Same thing but... with Duchesne and Dallas, right? It's like, yeah. how does how does that work? Dallas is a really good team. Um, and, you know, he, he was cut loose. They bought him out. And yeah. he just signed, I think, a one-year deal, like $5 million. He's like, all right, we'll go down to yeah, Dallas, see it... what they got. And and he scored uh, he scored in the shootout last night a pretty sweet goal. I was mm-hmm. watching that game and he like they looked Still good. Like that game talented. was good. You know who played you know who played really well last night? Jordan Bennington. He was unbelievable. Jordan and that Bennington. was Jordan Bennington, which yep. is you know we haven't heard that in a while. You know it's been a couple of years since mm-hmm. he's been at the top of his game. He was the difference in that game. He stole St. Louis a point last night. So. It was it was some pretty good watching kind of I I was really focused around the league instead of just watching the seven Canadian teams I was like mm-hmm. okay let's see what these other teams got sure some pretty good players yeah you know? and only a couple games tonight but but then a full slate tomorrow yeah. and um, today is is Friday the thirteenth right and we've been playing the Halloween theme music a lot the last couple of days and we'll do it more as we get closer to Halloween but we figured like today's kind of a perfect day for it isn't it oh like, yeah we, we've started playing it it's Friday the 13th <laughs> um, I, I came up with a few different things that I think probably <laughs> would lead to the Halloween music in the background then we also have a game we're going to try here called level of Mike Myers where basically <laughs> two <laughs> people players scenarios are going to compete each against each other for who would be hearing the music louder right I think both would be subjected to it but i think we said this earlier i think russell wilson would be hearing this music when he's asked about his hall of fame chances anymore right like the way it's going with russ in denver i I think that that's probably the the case i think bill belichick if bob Kraft sends him an email for a meeting request right now i think bill belichick could legitimately be in trouble not during the season he's not getting fired during the season it is not going to happen do you not think there's a there's a part of him that just might say Check, please, like in the middle of the season. I think Luke said it a couple of times. I think Belichick might just walk away from that. He he might at the end of the year. I, I but, think at a minimum. Yeah, there's he a needs, lot of dollars involved there. That's another thing. And he's chasing records, right? He wants to hit 300 wins. I think he's at 299 right now. And I, right. I, I want to say there's only two other coaches lifetime that have 300. I think it's Shula and Tom Landry, I believe. So he wants to get to 300. He wants to chase history. Um, he but ain't it's doing ugly. much more than that there, Hazy, because John Cooper talks about it in the NHL. Show me a good coach or show me a good goalie and I'll show you a good coach. Yep. NFL, yeah. show me a good quarterback. I'll show you a good coach. And he ain't doing squat with Mac Jones at quarterback. He's got there. no chance. Nothing. He's, he's got absolutely no chance. And that's the truth. Yep. The way Mac Jones is playing. And the rest of the, the, lo- the roster is not very good either. They're undisciplined. They turn the ball over a ton. Like, Bill Belichick's hearing this a lot, man. I'm telling you, Bill Belichick, <laughs> he didn't hear this at all for 20 years. Well, right? think about his at general all. attitude and pressers. 
He had one game, I believe they scored zero points, and the other one was three. That's right. That's yeah. right. They've been skunked. Like, they have the worst offensive production in football. And that's saying something, considering what we just watched last night, right? Russ put yeah. Russ and the Broncos put eight on the board, and Bill Belichick would salivate if he had that option. Um, I think Remind that's your... Of, go ahead. What's what's Russ's contract? How it's much a is monster. He, is he making forty? Oh making yeah, it 40? was a it was like a two hundred and seventy five million dollar deal or something. Like it was a monster. Oh. Yeah, I, I think he's making forty three, forty four a year. So I thought, yeah, man, a lot of it fully man. guaranteed. Like they're really locked in. That, that's just a mess, and that's the one thing Peyton will be able to say, and he will leak this through the media. Is this guy is so bad, and I didn't bring him here. Right. I, 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 I had to acquire him based on me taking the gig. You know, he, he was here, it was guaranteed money, not my problem. And and he'll probably allow himself to move on from that at some point. I think Thatcher Demko is going to hear this tomorrow night when he gets the start in Edmonton, if he does. Because I feel like McDavid and Dreisaitl <laughs> and the Oilers are going to crush Vancouver tomorrow night. Yeah, but do you know really? how frustrating yes. it is when you want to crush the opponent? I've talked to some people in Van, and they understand fully that Edmonton's going to be ready. Mm -hmm. But you know what deflates being ready? When there's one power play five minutes in, and it's in the back of your net. Yeah. And Stu Skinner's I, I, swimming around, and it's just bar down, and it's like, what are we... Dude, you have zero chance of winning. Like, that goaltending performance in game one, mm -hmm. like, you're not winning in any professional league in the world like no you can't you have it's, you gotta have adequate goaltending yeah no, I, I, I mean you gotta have the, the goalies goal the goalies were bad but i mean they were just bad period like Whole team. edmonton like like darnell nurse looked like he was on a different planet like mm -hmm. i don't know what was going on there you know bouchard like they had this kid broberg who's yeah. the third pairing He's a first guy. round pick right He's, he's but a he, good like prospect for them. He is a prospect, and they want Ekholm to play with him. But he was completely lost. Like, I was looking at some of the the goals, and, yeah, like, I think the goalies were, like, guessing wrong side on screen plays and all that. Like, but it was just a – it was a mess. Like, yeah, Edmonton so well. switched their uh, defense. You want to talk about who's hearing this music? The decor before the meeting of all the highlights, the video meeting. Mm-hmm. Because you know that you had one that was so egregious and you're about to see it. I don't know if yeah. coaches do that. I think it was kind of like a – it was a tough one when a guy makes an egregious error and then you're sitting in the video room and the coach is like, see that? It's like we all know what happened there. Right. Like you threw a pizza up the middle. Like pull the guy aside and have a coaching moment. I don't know. To show that video would be awfully tough. It is, but to your point, if it's like multiple mistakes that are structural and sound, that's when you know they're going to hammer. Right. You know, like like Brody blowing a wheel, Lilligren messing up on the sideboard. You don't you don't need to show the tape. Like no. it was embarrassing and it was a bad yeah. play. But yeah. if you don't pick up your man like countless times, yeah. If there's then ten guys that have an have an opportunity to get it in deep and they don't, you got to show that. Yes. It's Say, guys, shown. look at here. You're not getting it in deep, and it costs you. Right. With but guys blowing a battle. tire and stuff, you can't. No, it's, there's no point. You're just embarrassing the guy even exactly. more than he already is. He's already embarrassed. All right. Uh, level of Mike Myers. You mentioned the Oilers goaltending. Which do you think is hearing this music louder? The goaltending room in Edmonton or the Ottawa Senators cap room, salary cap room? The cap room. You think I, so? I, okay. Shane I, Pinto's the, the gone home. He flew to Ottawa and he left. Got, well, yeah, get it. I, Bruce Garriott tweeted out getting too much attention. Right. Like, he left. See you later. I mean, they need him. They need him based on Josh Norris's health, too. Now, it sounds like Norris might play tomorrow. Which would be, you know, I'm calling that game. I'm, you know, it, I'm excited to see how it's going to unfold. Mm -hmm. But again, we're we're talking about like Pinto's healthy, just unsigned. Like that's the difference. Right. And you know, you're you're trying to find pennies here to get him sorted out. And you lost game one. Tomorrow is a statement. You gotta have hit home the ground opener, running on home. Yeah, on noodles home is ice. between the benches. And I'm totally. Yeah. I totally see this differently. I think it's the Edmonton goalie room for sure. All we talk about is how McDavid and company are poised to win the Stanley Cup. They pulled their goalie seven times during the playoffs last year, and the first game starts like that. 
I'm telling you, guys sit on the back of the bus, and as long as the goalie's not around, they're saying, how the hell are we going to win if we can't get a save? Like, which one of these two guys is going to get us a save? Mm -hmm. I, I think there's, I think it's loud in both spots. I think in Ottawa, like everyone keeps saying, and I understand it, they're trying to find the money. How are they going to do that now? Like, if, if there's not a, mo a trade for Matthew Joseph today, or if there wasn't one a week ago, why would there be today? You know, like, how are you, you can't go back and repeal the Tarasenko contract. Well, that's the name you that know, keeps yeah. coming up. It's like, why was Tarasenko, although you're trying to replace Debrinkat, it's almost like P Pinto had to be the replacement for Debrinkat. Right. Internally, but, you got to build up, and then yes. if you still have money, then then you find a way to make that work. But yeah, and yeah. I'll tell you what, now people, Tarasenko is going to get a good dose of what it's going to be like playing in a Canadian market, because all eyes are going to be on him. Every back check, every play that he half asses something, people are going to say, "Look at this, we can't have Pinto, and we got this guy out there who's not working." So right. he, it's he like he's better, taking the shrapnel almost, even though it's oh, not his he fault. is taking a yeah. lot of shrapnel. Sure. Um, all right, let yeah. me paint a picture for you. There's a Blue Jay fan interactive event downtown, right? And Ross Atkins and John Schneider walk in. Who do you think is hearing this music louder? Walking through the floor of the convention center downtown on front. Jay's fan interaction with <laughs> Ross Atkins and John Schneider. I think it's Ross. I just think for the way he handled that presser. I mean, I don't think... I think Schneider's earphones will have a little bit in it because he seemed to be saying a lot of the same things all year. But Ross, Ross left an unlikable kind of tone, mm -hmm. and and it yeah. was it was everywhere after. It was on the tube. It was on Twitter. It was an unlikable vibe afterwards. There's just no way around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's Ross. Like, I just didn't like, you know what? It, yesterday, I, I was struggling with Steve Phillips on. It was almost like we weren't believing some of the things that were being said in the last couple days. And and Ross is for, it's Ross for me. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too, because he's been here longer. He's in charge of, you know, the trades. We're, you know, you can yell at Schneider for certain things. Not that people, uh, we're not suggesting be disrespectful. This is a game we're talking about here. Right, but, right. You know, Schneider made mistakes. Um, there were a number of things throughout the year that he was accountable for or was supposed to be accountable for that simply never materialized for the team. But he's still a young manager. He's a likable guy. Ross a likable guy. But Atkins has yeah. been here for eight years. And, like, I, I think that Dalton Varsho trade, this music is blaring like you're at a rave in Ibiza. And, you know, what – why they didn't find more power bats. You know, there's a number of different things. How he handled certain polarizing topics throughout the year. I think this would be blaring for Ross. Like, yeah. blaring for Ross Atkins. I wonder if he's still in town. Like, they're, they're probably decomposing on the season. They're still probably Dude, going you would through have different to stuff. Be. You have to be. I guess you have to be. Um, anyway, all right. We got a lot more we'll get to. We'll sprinkle them in throughout yeah. the afternoon. We got Bill Guerin coming up. Uh, at least while tomorrow... You've got week six in the NFL, so Luke Wilson will join us. Team Owen Wilson, you guys are hearing that. I mean, that's your theme music right now because Hayes and companies rock. We're not hearing it. Like I told you, what you've done is got our attention for this weekend. That's it. That's okay. all you've done. Got your attention. All right. You yeah. like if we stink to join out this weekend and you have a massive weekend, much like we did on week one, mm -hmm. I will admit on Monday that we're in trouble. You could be in trouble. You yeah. could be in big trouble. So you're relying on your boy, Luke Wilson. He'll be stepping in uh, in about an hour from now. we got Dear Hazy B still to come as well. So more on the NFL this weekend. We, we're into the championship series in baseball, right? We saw some wild interviews last night and some crazy stuff going on in baseball in terms of the media turning on the media and player. Like yeah. Kevin Gosman was tweeting about the sanctity of a clubhouse. You guys can probably chime in on that as well. Like when you're in a dressing room, a clubhouse, the media is in there. Like, I think you, you, the players need to know almost everything's going to be on the record when they're in there. You know, yeah, I, I, it was like Joe Thornton in Vancouver years exactly. ago. Exactly. Yeah. E exact same situation where 95% of the media won't report on it, but the 5% that will, they will say, and they're right, that when they're in there, everything's on the record. When the doors are closed, different story. 
Do whatever you want in there. Say whatever you want in there. Okay, but if you want to be that person that does that, no one will ever talk to you in the future. That's the risk that you have to take. Mm -hmm. If you want to be the guy that snitches and said, oh, I saw that or I heard that, no one is ever going to talk to you again. Mm -hmm. That's the way I played the game. And I don't yeah. think you're alone. I don't think you're alone at all. But, yeah, you know. That was a weird one, that Joe Thornton one. I, I remember what – we all remember what the comment was. Mm -hmm. But I, re I remember, like, it was tongue-in-cheek, but then somebody – Either tweeted it or showed it on TV. I can't remember I how that got it. out. Yeah, I think it was in the paper, it, and and it got out. That that did become a big storm of like huge. You know, he it was a joke about something, and then it got out, and you know the language that was being used, and and it 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 started the conversation about you know from a media standpoint. Basically, when the doors open and the media walks in, everything's on the record, everything. And yeah. doesn't mean everything's going to get out, but I think you need to operate with that understanding. Dude, I got sewered. I got sewered, and I almost got in so much. People were so mad at me in Carolina. I was in Vancouver, and someone pulled me aside and said, off the record, what's it like playing down there? And I said, it sucks. Everyone is Ernie Bleep and Irvin fans. And the guy put it in the article the next day. Oh. This is what Carolina really? player Jeff O'Neill thought about playing in, in, in Carolina. I honestly wanted to track that guy down and dummy him in the locker room off the top turnbuckle. Mm -hmm. yeah, off the record, yeah. he says, what do you think about it? And I go, you know what? It stinks. They're all Ernie Bleep and Irvin fans. <laughs> and then Ernie I get Irvin? that one. Who is that? Ernie yeah, Irvin. Is he a country He's a singer? race car driver. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, don't yell at me. I would, I would love you if you played up here. I, yeah. I don't know who Ernie yeah. Irvin is. So Kevin yeah, Benin was at some function, and Ernie Irvin was there, and he got a, he signed an eight by ten for me. I was <laughs> that's so, so funny. That's great. <laughs> Ernie you know what Irvin. though? Like you've I, never I heard of be Ernie pissed. Irvin? I have no idea no. who Ernie Irvin is. I have absolutely. No. I could not care less about like. Grappler, NASCAR. Google that. Google that because I think that was the guy's name. Ernie Irvin, I thought, was a NASCAR driver. Uh, He's got a mustache. Does he? I just looked him up right now. American race car driver. The first image comes up. This guy's got a giant duster. Yes, Ernie like, Irvin. It, He's, yeah, the crazy wow. thing is he's from California. Like er, With a name yes. like Ernie Irvin and a stash, you would think that guy was from Raleigh. You know, but yeah, I don't know no. why that came to my name, but that guy sewered me with that. Ernie, Ir I wonder what well, Ernie the, Irvin thought about that comment. <laughs> well, I don't know if it. Look at this. Er <laughs> look at Ernie. <laughs> Ernie. Look, look at that, that guy. Cookie duster on that guy. Yeah, I guess he was a it great driver, though. I'm dude. On this. He was a legend, man. Yeah, one of the NASCAR's 50 greatest drivers ever. He was voted that in '98. He's in the Hall of Fame. Wow. Oh my, man. <laughs> that guy the is. NASCAR Hall of that Fame. guy's drank a lot of beer in his life, guaranteed. Yes. Like, Ernie that is Irvin. old school. But I'm I'm more pissed though. Did you have to pull that that scribe aside and say, "What the hell are you doing?" Like, did you have a conversation with him? No, like, I, 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 I. You know what I did after that noodles, and then everybody hated me even more. Days of morning skates. I refused to talk to the media. I said, "I'm not talking on game days because I need to be focused and I don't want to be distracted." So that was my new move yeah. after that. I just said, I'm not, I'm not talking. I'm like, you know, they're all like, you get to Toronto. They're like, what do you think about playing? The I just said, I don't talk to the media on game days because of that jerk that sewered me with mm. the Ernie Irvin comment. Grappler, you know what? Try to find the comment and we'll see who wrote it. And then we'll figure out who did it. Oh, man, like if I you... want to know. So was it someone in Vancouver, you think, or just a Canadian journalist? Was Dude, it a Canadian? I think I know who it is, but I'm not going to say it because... <laughs> I got a feeling I know who it is. All right. No. Uh, no? Okay. Yeah. Very good. I don't know. I mean, you think journalistic integrity. You tell someone it's off the record. That's so greasy. Like, that's that is yeah. that's a different story. Clubhouse, dressing room, on the street. You say off the record and then go on the record with it. That it's is a greasy move. Seriously greasy. <laughs> and then the night, from then yeah. on in, I never talked to the media on game days. All right. Well, shout out to Ernie that's Irvin. Brutal. Love Ernie. I got to look up this uh, the background on Ernie Irvin, man. It looks like he could turn left with the best of them, and I support I, that. I, I more want to find out the scribe that just threw you completely under the bus. If yeah. he said, if he said, you know, off the record, and then just did that, that's so greasy. I'm going to Google this me. quickly. I'm just going to type in Jeff O'Neill, Ernie Irvin, and I'll see <laughs> if it comes up. Because if it does, we will have an immediate 
answer. Uh, I'm not seeing anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's not high on the uh, algorithm. Not high on Google. the list. Jeff O'Neill and Ernie Irvin, two no, of the great not, 90s no. athletes down in Carolina. All right, we'll find wow. it. Uh, Bill Guerin coming <laughs> we'll up. Luke Wilson find it. still to come as well. Dear Hazy being an hour. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. Overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel. We got Bill Guerin coming up here in a moment. Still have not had any luck trying to track down that article when uh, O was basically <laughs> chirping Ernie Irvin, but also fans down in Carolina off the yeah. record and got. It sewer. was like it was like the Vancouver Sun. If they, if they have a van like a Sun like the Toronto Sun, mm-hmm. it, it was in that. The Vancouver Sun. All right, so look that up, Grappler and. We'll see. Wow. I, I have a feeling I know who it is. I, I have a feeling I know. Although I'd be surprised because this guy was kind of old school. I figured journalism yeah. 101. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. Not going to name well, names. Well, we'll name names if we find who Absolutely. it is. It could be like that. that. There it is. But you don't want to speculate. Telling you, if the actual real name of the person comes out, you guys are going to be shocked if it's who I think it is. I remember it as. Yeah, because like it, I've crossed paths with him numerous times, and I wanted to say, remember when you did that greasy thing? Mm-hmm. And I wanted to twist his ear right off his head. <laughs> <laughs> that seems reasonable. Yeah. Yeah, it's, listen, that's that's what comes with the territory, I guess, right? You're dealing with the media, you got to be careful. You go oh, on the yeah. record, you got to be careful, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But when you're supposed to be off the record, I guess that's a completely different situation. That's mm-hmm. true. Right? That's like, true. I'm sure Bill Guerin, who's coming on here, Bill knows <laughs> we're on the record here, right? If Bill says yeah. something, then exactly. uh, it's going to be recorded. It's going to get out there. Here yeah. he is, former NHLer. He's now the uh, GM down in Minnesota with the Wild. The Wild are in town tomorrow night. Joining us here on the Maple Toyota Hotline, here's Bill Guerin. How you doing, Bill? I'm doing great. It's just being recorded. <laughs> yes, it is. So everything's on the record. Yeah. Just want you, you ever want to twist yeah. anybody's ear right well, off their head, Billy? <laughs> a couple times. I think yeah. maybe you one night. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably true. <laughs> that's probably true. Yeah, it must be different, though, dealing with the media now as a GM as opposed to a player. I mean, now you represent the whole organization and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it, you've been doing it now for years, but did it take you a while to kind of put the GM hat on as opposed to the player hat for so many years? Yeah, it's. I mean, you definitely get different questions. Um, you know, and you, you, you yeah, it, I, I, it's just important to think before you answer, you know, I think a lot of people just kind of, kind of blurt out answers and that's, that's when you can get yourself into trouble. You really have, I mean, especially to, in today's world, you know, it's crazy. Everything's scrutinized. You just, you really just have to think. Billy, we were talking earlier in the, the previous hour uh, when you acquired Philip Gustafson, did you think he was going to be this good this early on? No, honest answer, no. We we so the 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 way it happened was that we we knew at, there could be a, a time that we moved on from from Cam Talbot just because he's a little older, and we're our staff did some work on younger goalies through the league, and he was a guy that they had identified as as having a lot of talent. We didn't really know why he hadn't really got any traction. Um, but when the, when the trade became available, we, we kind of, we thought about it for a few minutes and then we jumped on it because he was so young, but we did not, um, you know, we didn't expect this at all. Uh, we, we, you know, sometimes it's, it's good to be lucky too. And, and Phillips has put a ton of work into his, his game, his conditioning, just kind of the way he's, uh, you know, his professionalism. I think I think Flowers helped him a lot, um, but he's uh, yeah he's been very good for us. So Billy, you get that info like you guys sit in a room and you get feedback from all your scouts or your goalie people that look this over, and then ultimately you have to pull the trigger on that guy, or does somebody say to you, I I, I would really approve of you getting that particular goaltender. Yeah, you know what? I'm I'm extremely lucky. I have a bunch of smart guys and in, in, that work for me in scouting, uh, in, in analytics, and the front office, and, and they they really were proactive in just getting all that information just in case. And then, you know, when 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 it became available, I just kind of touched base with everybody real quick, and and it's it's like, well, yeah, he's one of the guys. 
And I said, because of the other situation that was going on with Cam, I just said, you know what? Yeah, we're going to do this. Um, so yeah, they, they, it, it's really a, a collaborative, uh, you know, working environment that we have. And, you know, I don't, I don't have to have all the ideas or whatever, but I do have to make the decision in the end. With Bill Guerin, GM of the Minnesota Wild, Minnesota in town tomorrow night. Um, one guy you made a decision on acquiring last year was Ryan Reeves. You brought him in for the last, I guess, 61 games and into the playoffs for you. And he's obviously signed up here in Toronto. And he's a big personality. He's a tough guy. You know, Toronto's already really starting, like fans are really starting to get behind him and got in a fight with Jack Guy the other night. Um, but, you know, the modern game, it's it seems to be changing. It seems to be getting away from that. Uh, I'm curious how, you know, you as a manager, when you're, you're putting forth plans for an upcoming season or a three- or five-year plan, like how often toughness still comes into play, fighting still comes into play. Like how often do those still come up as check marks you, you feel you might have to address? Well, I, I, I mean, it's, it's still part of the game in my mind. And Revo did a great job for us. I mean, he, when he, we were not playing great. Um, and when we got him, uh, it was more his, it was more his energy, his personality, his swagger, all that stuff that, that gave the guys confidence. And then obviously he can back it up. Um, he is pretty tough. Um, you know, that's what they tell me anyways. But he's uh, he's just a wonderful guy, like a good teammate. And, and the toughness part, I I think it's still part of the game and something that you you need to have some sort of that in your lineup. But that's my – that's my personal opinion. Other other people might see it differently, but um, and it's no shock to me that the fans already love Revo. I mean, he's he's a great guy. He's he's fun to watch and huge personality. Um, terrible dresser, uh, <laughs> but you know what? You can't. But you but you can't have everything. <laughs> right, you can't check every box. Um, <laughs> the the Minnesota Wild in town tomorrow night, and yeah, you, know, you talk about entertainment and, and fans possibly on the edge of their seat or coming out of it. This this Kaprizov has supplied that since he got here, um, and you know we don't see Minnesota a lot in Toronto. Obviously, you guys only roll through here once a season, but I think it's pretty fitting for him anyway that it's on a Saturday night. He's going to get a massive profile. I'm sure, he's massive in your market, you know, city, state, etc. But uh, do you think he gets enough pub, like, nationally in the NHL, considering how good he's been since he arrived? I think he's starting to. Um, you know, I, I think he's one of the premier players in the league. Um, he does he does something special every single night. Uh, and, yeah, like I said, I, I think it's just going to keep his, – his, his popularity is just going to keep growing and growing. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he's a special player. Like I get to, I'm lucky enough. I get to watch him on a nightly basis. Um, you know, so, so I'm a little spoiled, but he is, uh, he's something else. Billy, we've been talking about the cap a lot, you know, the situation in Ottawa and they got to find a way with one of their players and teams with their lineups and it's cap, cap, cap. How much does cap occupy of your day? Is it something that's just always cooking for you? Yeah, every single day, honestly, and especially when you come up on injuries and things like that, it really can can get complicated. I think the other night, four teams played shorthanded, so um, nobody's alone in this. And there's just you know, w- without the cap going up much at all in the last you know four years, it's 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 been tough because yeah. Billy, you, you know, can see from a contract. fan's perspective, couldn't you, where it's like this early and already teams are playing shorthanded. I know that fans just come up to me and I have no idea what the hell it's even all about, but they're like, that's goofy to like this early in the season. There's like injury cap problems. It does seem goofy to a fan. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it can, um, but you know, I mean, you're tight against the cap because you have the players that you want to have too. So, uh, and, and you know what, some, some nights you might have to play, but you have to try to, you know, manage your cap as best you can and accrue as much cap space throughout the year as you possibly can. It, it, it does get complicated. That's why I have much smarter people than me uh, around me all the time to help me with that stuff. Well, when you're, like, discussing a possible trade, you get up to the deadline, does the cap conversation come up first? When you call like an opposing GM, or is it the actual oh, yeah. player, the talent? Yeah. No, it's a cap. 
No, well, I mean, the the player and the talent is the easy part. I think the then the then you you know, you, have the, you have to fit the the piece into the puzzle, um, you know, financially. So, you know, what percentage do they have to eat if they can eat any at all? Like, what can we afford to do, or what can you take back to to kind of make this all work? Um, it, it can get complicated and kind of drawn out, but um, you know. It, that's just the world that we live in right now. And for us in, in Minnesota, it's, Hey, look, it, it's, th- there are some offers out there for some really good players, but it's, it's got, for us, it's gotta be money in money out. Um, you know, if it's a hundred bucks coming in, then it's a hundred bucks going out. And that's just the, the only way that we can do it right now. Yeah. It's interesting how that's working right now. Uh, you got a kid on your team who's, you know, super talented and Matt bold. He scored 31 goals as a 21 year old last year. Have you golfed with him? Because it, it sounds like he's a hell of a golfer as well. No, he's not good enough to play in our foursome. I, I just, I mean, he's only, a, he's only a scratch and played in a Canadian tour event this year. It was, uh, he, he's he. I think he, Matt's one of those kids that's good at whatever sport he plays. Like he could, I don't know, he could throw him a squash racket and he'll be he'll be great at it. But um, golf is definitely his second passion, and he is uh, he's spectacular. Billy, his name came up after the playoffs. I was just reading a piece. I don't know if it's actually factual, but it was like you guys wanted more from him in the playoffs. How do you kind of approach that in the modern day with players? It's not like it's not like when we played the approach or the language or the talking to. Just how do you go about approaching a player? You know what? I, I think the the biggest thing is that you talk to them with respect, but you also got to hit them right between the eyes with the information. Right. Um, and I, I think the kids these days, I think they really like that. They're 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 always asking the question why. You know, and and if they want to know why, they're going to get it. And and I think that's I think it's important to to be extremely honest with them. Um, like I said, give them all the information that they need to be successful. And you know what? Maybe why they did or why they didn't have success in our mind. And then, um, but you know, it's it, it has it has changed for the better. You, you you're not. Um, you know, you're not berating players or tell them, telling them they don't care or anything like that. They, we're, I guess our, our roles change so much. It's not, we're trying to help these guys. And that's, that's our main, our, our main uh, job, I think, is to just help these guys get better. So, yeah, we need more from that in, in the playoffs. And, and we're doing everything we can to help them get there. And, uh, yeah, you know, and that's the thing. They, these kids today, they, they, they show up for it. They, they want to do better. They want to be great. Lee's Wild tomorrow night. Uh, he is Bill Guerin, longtime NHLer and uh, GM of the Minnesota Wild. We really appreciate you doing this today, Bill. Good luck tomorrow night and uh, the rest of the way. Thanks for having me on, guys. You got it. Bill Guerin joining us here on the Maple Toyota Hotline. Build your next dream Toyota at Maple Toyota. Check out Maple Toyota's pre-owned inventory arriving daily. It's time to Toyota. Visit MapleToyota.com. That guy was a yeah. horse out on the ice. Yes. Oh, was he yeah, ever. Was he tough. Yeah. He was yeah. tough. Like, he was just a big dude out there. Like, you could not knock that guy off the puck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Him and Againla had a great fight right in front of me. A couple games into the season, I think Billy was with Boston. And I remember Aginla broke his, like, knuckle or something on his, like, ribs. He gave him, like, a body shot. And it was right in front of me. It was just, a, like, two big men just going at it. And Garen was, like you say, big hands and kind of just really strong. And Aginla could fight, too. It was a great fight. I was five feet right in front of me. It was awesome. Yeah, but, that's uh, that's really what has, has left the game maybe more than anything is – like the stars that would fight and wanted to fight and looked for fights. Yeah. You know, you still have, you know, a number of guys who will fight, can fight. You'll have the spontaneous tilt from time to time. But like again, and Garen are both like studs, you know, yeah, like power forward. Power yeah. For, yeah. Like we talk about Shanahan all the time. He's got, got 600 goals. He's in the Hall of Fame. He fought yeah. all the time. You know, it was <laughs> like that just, yeah. I don't know what the equivalent would be of, like a player of that stature now, it's like, you know, Jason Robertson gets in eight fights a year. Like that just doesn't. Yeah. And when he fights, <laughs> yeah, you're right. he fights Pasternak and then he fights <laughs> Mitch Marner, you know? And, yeah. 
Like just like great players, guys you have the game plan against because they might score three on you, but you also need to keep your head up because they but might guys kill like you. Guys like Shanahan and and Aginla, they would fight heavyweights. Like they would fight Darian Hatcher, dude. Right. Yeah. That yeah. guy was a yeah. menace. Both of <laughs> yeah. those guys would <laughs> always fight Darian Hatcher. That's insane. I saw a yeah. video online recently um, of Shanahan fighting Probert when Probert like first returned to Detroit or something. Like they had just recently been flipped. He was in Chicago, and Shanahan had just arrived. And that's Bob Probert, like the number one wow. heavy possibly of all time. And the guy's got wow. 600 goals. <laughs> He's in the <laughs> Hall of Fame and on like Team. You Canada. saw the video of those two fighting? Yeah. It's it's a fight behind the net at, at Joe Louis Arena. And it's, Shanahan's wow. with Detroit. Yes. He had just arrived at Detroit. Like I think it was the one of the first five or ten games as a Red Wing, I believe. And Proby was coming through with Chicago and like Proby hit the goalie and Shanahan was around and he's like, All right, I guess it's my turn. I gotta take this guy on. And it was like wow. a good tilt, like a legit fight. Like behind, wow. it wasn't a seat belt. It wasn't like I gotta watch yeah. myself here. Like that's the kind of stuff you just would never see. Like Dylan Larkin never. isn't fighting Ryan Reeves if Reeves hits the goalie. You know what I mean? It's no, just, the uh, modern no. day guys, like we have a problem over here. Right? Isn't that two yeah. and a five, or isn't that two and ten? <laughs> you know, what about a double minor? They just start yelling at the refs, right? Yeah, the fights not gonna happen. Um, no. All right, Luke Wilson in 20 minutes. Uh, Dear Hazy B still to come as well. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. All right, Luke Wilson coming up. Dear Hazy B in about 40 minutes. Mail it in Fridays. Brought to you by our friends at Boston Pizza. Right, Boston Pizza, the only place to be. We love it. It's a big weekend for Boston Pizza, I think. Right, we're coming off Thanksgiving last week, which is a lot of hosting. This week, you just kind of want to mail it in basically just put your yep. feet up relax that's where boston pizza comes into yeah. play got football sunday maybe nikki taylor out in vegas might be in the hunt that's right oh, that's right yeah shout yeah. out to lexi thompson by the way she almost made the cut she all she was inside the cut line like well into her round today and then uh obviously it it went awry i guess on the back but she almost made it she almost made the cut i think that would have been the first time a, a woman did that on the pj tour and yeah like decades, I believe. Like a and long, she beat long time. like fifty-five guys on day one. Yeah, like, yeah, tour well, she players was bombing the ball. Like she, she had a three hundred and ten-yard drive yeah. on Thursday. She drove the fifteenth hole today. Yeah, that's a monster drive. Like she, she is. Uh, she's a great player, obviously. Um, but that's you know, it's a different, it's a different beat, different tees, different length of golf course. I, I bet you they get Nelly Corda out there. She'll make a cut out there. Yeah, I think Nelly. I think you know Brooke Henderson's one that can bomb the ball. Um, yeah, Nelly can bomb the ball. There's no question about that. Um, yeah, I, I think it also like it probably comes down to the different courses. Like the really long courses are difficult for everyone to play. But if you right. if you have different courses where it's like a shorter par fours where you could score in different ways, um, I, I absolutely believe that. Nelly could do that. I think Brooke could do that. Lexi could do. That. I think a number of players on the LPGA Tour could pull that off, no question. Um, yeah. Kind of a strange segue, but we were talking about Shanahan <laughs> versus Probert, <laughs> and you can roll the tape up on TSN four. Um, yeah, this was there. It is like Shanahan Probert behind the net. Probert had run into the goalie. I don't know who was playing the net, Vernon God. or someone. Jesus and, Murphy, like just monsters yeah. and. Like someone sent another note in about how like Shanahan had fought Brashear at MSG, like center ice buckets off. <laughs> like again, the guy by that point probably had almost 600 goals at that point if he was in New York. Um, and the reason we brought this up because we were talking about Bill Guerin and Noodles. You were saying you saw Gimla, Gimla versus Guerin, yeah. and just you know Rick Tockett versus Wendell Clark, like all these great great players who were like stars ticket sellers because he thought they'd score they get in fights all the time fights yeah. all the time with each other and well, that that's a, what that, it was that is back totally then, gone that is totally Dude, yeah. gone from that there. right there is big time business man dealing with the <laughs> well no that is crazy mm -hmm. bobby probert like bobby probert is one guy that i saw him on the ice i'm like 
I wasn't a chicken, but I'm like, I'm not going near that guy. No. No. Like, nowhere near that guy. No. Not happening. And especially back at Joe Louis Arena, where that was his house for years. Yes. Like, he was back in Detroit, and everyone was like, man, Proby's back. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's that's a monster for sure. Um, all right, Luke Wilson coming up in the final hour. We'll continue to look ahead to Leafs Wild tomorrow night. Sid versus Ovi tonight down in Washington. And Dear Hazy B at 6.30. Our best bets brought to you by FanDuel as well. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app.